What's going on crypto miners and welcome back to the channel. Well, in today's video, we're going to heat my entire house this fall and winter with this Bitcoin miner, but not in the way you're thinking. So what in the world is this thing? Well, I'd like to introduce you to the Altair Tech Erlacher, and this is actually a two in one combo. It's a conversion kit that you guys see over here. So if you already have like an S19K Pro or other models, you can use this conversion kit and kind of convert them or you can buy it exactly like this straight out of the box. It comes ready to go. So let's talk about this a little bit and then how we're gonna kind of modify this in our own way to work for me here at home. So as you notice right away, what's up with the power supply? Well, traditionally, you know, this comes in at a, what is this, an S19K Pro, and this is the 115 terahash model. And traditionally, you'd have a much bigger power supply over here and, you know, use a massive amount of watts and you couldn't run this at home and you need a PDU, you need a 30 amp or 20 amp, and you don't need that for this. What the team over at Altair Tech has done is put the time and research in to come up with this modification model. So you actually remove the entire uh, stock power supply, you slide this one in and you use this 3D printed unit to go ahead. Look at that, you can see the backside. The 3D unit just kind of mounts right into where the power supply would go. And you can see the power cables and everything come off of this to go ahead and directly convert it from a traditional power supply with the bus bars into this combination unit here. And spinning it around, you might be like, well, what's up with the ethernet cable and this blue thing? This blue thing is actually a Wi-Fi adapter. So it allows you to go ahead, gets power directly from the power supply, and then takes an ethernet connection, like in this scenario, which a normal unit uses, and allows it to be wireless. So it takes wireless, converts it over to ethernet. I am gonna remove this because I don't need it, um, because I am right near a plug, but we are going to just leave it in place so we don't lose it, but it's a nice feature because you could put this anywhere you want. Now, the S19K Pro runs on the Lux OS firmware and actually has a specific firmware set up and some profiles set up from Altair Tech because you can't run this at like a full blast. You can't run your S19K Pro at 3000 plus watts. It wouldn't work, especially over this power supply. And you can see we have a C13. So they actually send you this heavy duty C13 to your NEMA 515 plug. And so we can go ahead and run this at a portion of what the S19K Pro would run, but this is awesome. However, I'm not gonna leave it like this because I can't run this in my basement. My wife would kill me. These fans would be massively loud. And I wanna heat my entire home, not just my basement. So let me show you what I'm up to. All right, so here's half of my game plan. Let me show you. So my plan is to go ahead and remove the stock fans that you guys can see right here. They're just too loud. So we're gonna remove those on the front and we're gonna remove those on the back. And then we're going to install the AC Infinity inline fan, which you guys know is very popular on my channel. This is an 800 CFM. It's almost like a turbine fan the way it spins. And it's gonna go through here through this shroud, these are printed by Crypto Cloaks, and I'll leave links to everything you guys see here if you guys decide to go crazy like me. So this will actually bolt directly into the actual chassis with removing the fans on the front and on the back, and we do have a shroud as well. Now we will be using, which are very common on my channel, we do have dummy plugs that'll go in to spoof the fans so that the actual ASIC doesn't have a fit and throws a bunch of errors and failures. So that'll spoof the fans. So it's, we don't have to worry about the fans at all. Now, the other thing is what we're gonna do is we're gonna come off the back of this and we're going to go into an eight inch ductwork that you guys can see here with, we have some hose clamps and our trusty super thick foil tape. This stuff is absolutely crazy. If you ever wanna look for the good stuff, it's the really thick, it's almost like this, what does that say, polyken. Uh, and it has this blue um, kind of plastic on the bottom you peel off. This is the really thick stuff, not the cheap, real thin stuff. But then, after, so after we flow all the way through, so we're gonna pull air from inside my basement, use it to cool the ASIC. Now, we're not gonna be able to go ahead and quiet and cool down the power supply. It's just not gonna work out with the shroud system, but it's gonna go through, cool our ASIC miner, 
go through the ductwork and then into this collar here. And I haven't done this before. We're kind of making this up as we go. But once it goes into this collar, where's it going? So let's take a walk here out into my basement. And where are we gonna put this collar? Well, let's go ahead and move these doors here. And here's my game plan. So here is my home furnace setup. And to give you guys an idea, this is our return duct coming down from up top here. You can see it's coming down and then it drops down and makes a straight 90 through a filter. This is just a traditional filter. I might actually replace the filter while I'm at it here and then goes into my system. So I wanna keep this going. I wanna use the blower to go ahead and push the heat around my house. So what I'm gonna do is, is I wanna take this collar and cut this directly into my return duct. And we'll go ahead and use that tape, tape it all up and everything. And my thought is to take this table and put this table right over here and go ahead and duct that hot air into the return duct. That hot air will then be sucked down, go through the filter and then into the furnace which won't make the furnace kick on or anything uh, because it's gonna read the temperatures are coming through the house warm enough and then blow that air back through up and through the house, which will then put it through all the vents. Now, this is kind of the first stage of this. There's a whole home assistant and home automation system that can adjust the hash rate based off of the home's temperature. I'm looking, looking to get into that in the future. All right, so check out this mad scientist stuff right here. So everything came together pretty dang good. So here's our inland fan and this shroud, this is just a shroud cover. Uh, it's 3D printed there. But we have our inline fan and we actually have our manual fan controller if we need that, which is nice there, it's magnetized. We have our tape in place with our shroud and I wanted to keep this open to show you guys. So I actually, here's the dummy plugs and S19K Pros are really goofy. Uh, that's just marker by the way, because they have the traditional four pin uh, fan. These are just those little spoofers. You guys can see here and it just slides in traditional fan port and then they have the weird square ones i don't know why they have a hybrid a half and half really weird so we have those additional fan spoofers here in there and then you can actually see how the actual power supply adapter works how it actually just goes into these terminals here which you normally would have uh, the power supply you know hooked up to and then you have your bus bars come across so we have that done into our shroud into our eight inch duct work so now we're ready to go ahead and install our collar. All right, check this out. So I went ahead and ran our ethernet from here back through, and this is all just in place temporarily, kind of a proof of concept, make sure everything works as we expect, and over into a network switch in the closet over there. And then what I did was, as you guys can see, our ductwork runs from the back side right into that collar, and it's all taped up with that tape, all heavy duty. You can see we actually cut out the ductwork there. Worked out perfectly, actually, just using the collar as a uh, kind of a template there. Now, what I did do is over on my Nest system, I do have the fan on all the time, which is exactly what we want. And it's actually 69 degrees currently right now in the house. So I want to show that as a good proof of concept. We're going to do a DB level down here just to see how loud is this unit once we get up and running. I did go ahead and grab my watt meter, plugged it in right here. So right now, let's see if I can pull this up. We're using 13 watts right now for my inline fan running at a speed of three. And here's our other plug to go ahead and let's get the miner plugged in. All right, so let's take a look at this a little bit closer. So we're over on altairtech.io. Uh, I'll put a link directly down below. And this is the Erlatcher. Now, there's a bunch of different um, kits you can go with. You can see under variant here, there's an S19K Pro. There's also the S21. Uh, then there's just the conversion kit itself. So if you have everything that you need, you know, they sell the, the direct conversion kit um, or there's also just the PSU, like the actual shroud itself. So they kind of allow you to kind of park this out. Now, this is the S19K Pro all by itself. It comes exactly out of the box as expected. And you can see here, it goes from $1,489. It includes the miner and the whole kit. And here you can see it's coming in at 56 terahash at 1200 watts. So that's actually pretty dang good. 1200 watts for a home miner setup. We're gonna run this on a traditional 15 amp uh, 120 volt. We're gonna plug it right in there. Now it is coming in saying your DB is about 53 DB because what happens is it turns down the fans a lot. It makes them a lot quieter, uh, but we're gonna go inline fan system, man. It is so, so freaking quiet. And at 56 terahash, this should work out perfectly. I mean, it should work out great. I'm looking forward to it. Now, 
other things if you need any other accessories come on over here to my website thehobbyistminer.io slash where to buy you can click up top under mining accessories and we have a bunch of the things that we're talking about so the inline fans those are available over here um you don't buy directly from me these are just direct links for you guys most of these are affiliate links uh the shroud the intake shroud um the cover the dummy fans are over here so you can see you know the inline fans about another 159 bucks so these things do add up um the spoofers you can find right over here as well on amazon maybe 20 bucks or so the shroud now the shroud we actually get from crypto cloaks they have an eight inch shroud uh, which is this guy right here you can pick your color uh, i just went with traditional black and then the tape that i showed you you don't have to go with this tape it's absolutely crazy heavy du duty but this is the stuff that i use for my all my sheds and i've had great success but it is pricey almost 50 bucks then you also have the eight inch ductwork if you need that and then finally here is that collar uh, that you guys did see here uh, that can be used for a variety of different things, uh, but we're using it. So it's about $15. All right, guys, I got work to do. I cannot wait to show you the finished product. So I've been up and mining for about an hour now. I want to show you guys how we're doing. So first, let's look at watts at the wall here. So let's raise this up. So 1,163 watts. And the nice thing is I've seen that fluctuate and go down quite a bit when I've adjusted some of the frequencies. Well, I'll show that over on the computer in just a minute but guys everything is running beautifully now i know you guys are curious on sound right because that was one of the main reasons i went with the inline fan system and we are on a speed of three currently right now so i'm going to put this right here and let's see how loud this is so 54 to 55 this honestly right now just sounds like a uh, a box fan or a ceiling fan. It's super, super quiet. You can barely even tell it's running, which is great. And then coming back here, putting my hand here, I can feel it's warm, which is awesome. And yeah, look at this. This is awesome. Working out really, really well. All right, let's jump over to the computer. I want to show you everything over there. All right, so we've been up and mining for about an hour now, had dinner with the family, cleaned up, and, and let's jump back to it. So um, learned a lot in the meantime, tinkered around a lot, which is good. Uh, one thing I absolutely learned, and uh, I'm not sure if you can see in this picture, there's this little board here, this little purple board here. It's actually right here. This is the Loki board. I took it out when I was putting in my fan spoofers, thinking it was for one thing and it's for another. So this Loki board is pre-installed in the unit, comes with it and everything. Uh, it also comes with, if you decide to do the kit, there's the conversion kit. Everything comes with it that you need there. Anyways, you can see it's actually in this top corner here. That actually tricks the ASIC to allow it. You can see here, named after the Norse god of mischief, the Loki kit tricks the Bitmain uh, miners into hashing from any suitable DC power. Want to run your uh, rig from a 120 volt outlet? Use the Loki kit. So once I reinstalled that, man, everything started working as to be expected. But We've been up and hashing for about an hour now. Uh, I have this one unit on my test account on Via BTC, um, which is right here. You can see the Erlacher and the 10 minute hash rate is 65 terahash, which is absolutely wild. Jumping over to the actual miner side, let's refresh the page. Our five minute hash rate is right around 60 terahash right now. Exte uh, the power usage says 1263. It's actually less than that, which is absolutely awesome. And you can see in the top right hand corner 57 minutes now the nice thing is is as you guys can see here is that voltage that we were talking about and that frequency so i went ahead and did some reading in they have great documentation over on altair tech on this unit and it talks about not going over 300 megahertz uh, so taking a look they say most of these ship with about 295 megahertz at the preset of uh 12.4 volts at 295 and so I've been playing around with that. I actually started at 245 and that was like 900 watts. It was awesome. Uh, and started with that, you can actually come into your preset profiles here. You can see all your chips up in green. Love to see it. But you have all your different options in here. And if you guys caught earlier, I was talking about the fact of looking at there is an open source software called, I think it's called Home Assist. Some of you guys correct me, where it will go ahead and actually dial down. You see we're at negative 12. It will dial down things and dial up them based off of the temperature uh, to go ahead and kind of sync up with your uh, home thermostat. 
um, versus me right now doing everything manual. So it's something that I'm looking at more and more. But our unit's been up and running really, really well. I've been super, super happy with it so far. Um, let's go ahead and take a look over at the unit and see how much our temperature has changed. All right, so check it out. As I said, it's been about an hour here and you can see that we're at 73 degrees currently. So we went from 68, 69 up to 73 in about an hour, which is great. So it's helping to go ahead and rotate and push that heat out through the house, which works out well, but it's very manual now. You know, I have to use the manual fan controller. I have to go ahead and adjust, you know, the different uh, presets and frequencies in order for like how the temperature and such. So something I'm very much interested in doing in the near future, and there's a whole community around this, of looking into, as I said before, I think it's called Home Assist, that will integrate it with my Home Nest unit. Cannot wait. If you guys know more, you've done something like this, please let me know directly down below. But this Erlacher unit from the team over at Altair Tech will be heating my entire house this fall and winter. Guys, I'll leave links to everything directly down below that you see here, my mad scientist work that we did, but I'm so thrilled that it's worked out. See you guys next time. Hey everyone, quick announcement that I'm pumped to share with you. I've officially teamed up with the Mining Disrupt crew to help spread the word about one of the biggest crypto mining events of the year. Mining Disrupt 2025 is coming up fast and this time it's happening in Dallas, Texas. I've personally attended the last three years, and I can tell you from experience, if you're serious about mining, this event delivers. Whether you're a home miner, just getting started, managing a mid-sized farm, or running a full-scale hosting operation, Mining Disrupt brings the community together under one roof. Expect major hardware launches, inspiring talks from industry leaders, opportunities to meet fellow miners, connect with content creators, and brand new this year, a mining farm tour. Tickets are available right now and use the code HOBBYISTMINER at checkout for 20% off. Just click the link in the video description or scan the QR code on the screen right now. Listen, I'll be there and I'd love to see you too. Let's make it a week to remember. Mining Disrupt 2025, here we come.